So if we go into the directory with the same name as the download directory, then we can open that in Visual Studio. And the first thing we'll see when it loads is our form. We only have one form for this application. So we have our info label at the top and then we'll report our switch state switch states here and then with this radio button we'll choose our state for LED 3 and then with this drop down box we can use LEDs 4 through 11 to display a number in binary on those LEDs uh, with a value of 0 to 255. So if we take a quick look at the code we have some defined statements, some global variables and then we have some additional namespaces we have to bring in and then we have seven functions here and these are taken directly out of the microchip USB firmware stack examples that are Windows API functions that will allow us to perform USB communication then we have our constructor with some quick initializations then we have the large block of code here's some global variables then we have the large block of code designed by the Windows form designer. Let's fast forward through that. Then we have essentially our events down here, form one load, uh, clicking on the info label, uh, attempting a connection, and this is the USB connect function which is mostly taken out of the microchip USB firmware stack examples. This is where we'll call those seven Windows API functions to set up our USB communication. Then down at the bottom here we're going to have uh, the events to handle our radio buttons being chosen and then that checkbox and drop down box. And then also our code to update our switch states. That concludes our tour of the host software. So our final step is going to be to get a current compile for the host software and the firmware. So if we rebuild our host software and for some reason something wrong with my Visual Studio install I often get that linker file error first and then if I recompile it compiles clean and there we are rebuild succeeded so now we can exit Visual Studio and if we go back to our firmware directory and choose our compile button and there we go, build succeeded. And of course we want to save our workspace. So now we have a currently compiled hex file in our firmware directory and then if we go to the directory with the same name and then debug, that's where we'll have our host software executable. Now that we have our firmware hex file and our host software executable file we're ready to load our firmware into the 18F4550 and then try out the desktop executable. So here we are in front of our computer with our completed demo board circuit and our trusty PIC Kit 2. First thing we're going to do is connect the PIC Kit 2 to our 6-pin programming header as before. Now we're going to open our PIC Kit 2 standalone programming software. And sure enough, the PIC Kit 2 auto detected that we're connected to a circuit with an 18F4550 in it. So we'll go to File, Import Hex, and then we're going to navigate to our desktop. and 18F4550 USB demo board version 1.0 and one more folder and sure enough there we have our 18F4550 USB demo board version 1.0 hex file double click on that successfully imported and we're gonna write and programming is successful so now what we're gonna do is close out of the PicKit 2 software
and zoom in on our demo board. I'm going to turn my speakers up just a bit. Remove the pick kit too. And then we're going to plug the A end of our USB cable into our USB connector. And since our circuit board is a true USB device, we should get the da doink sound from the operating system. And sure enough, there it is. So the way our board is set up here, buds 0, 1, and 2 indicate the states that we saw earlier in main.c stepping through all the way to configured. And this LED at the bottom of the board here, 12, that's uh, just a power LED. Anytime the computer is powering the board, that LED will be on. Now, notice that we disconnected the PIC kit 2 first and then connected our USB cable. We always want to do it in that order. This circuit really isn't set up to handle multiple power supplies. Therefore, it's really better not to leave the PIC kit 2 connected as the same, at the same time as the USB connector since that also provides power. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pan back and we're going to start our application. I'll try and get the circuit board in view of the screen at the same time. There we go. So if we navigate to, I've shrunk the window down so it's visible on screen here. If we get navigate back down to that debug directory and the USB demo board desktop software executable, here's what we'll find opens. Check that's visible on camera. And we see the connection is successful in our status label here and that currently none of the switches are pressed and the LED 3 state is chosen to be off. So if we, with these radio buttons here, if we turn LED 3 on or off, we can switch it back and forth. And if we press any of the three buttons for switch state, the display on our application will update. pressed or not pressed, and in fact we can press two of them at once or even all three if we like. And finally, the uh, LEDs 4 through 11 on the front of the board as we're viewing it now could be used for debugging. You could put statements in your firmware to set those LEDs on at certain times to indicate which parts of the code you're getting into or not getting into. Or, as we've configured our desktop software here, we can check this box and then choose a value from this drop down anywhere from 0 to 255 to display on LEDs 4 through 11 binary. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and so on. So for example 127 would be all but the last LED on, 255 would be all on. And there we have it. So we've demonstrated both input and output via USB communication between our computer and our circuit board. So everything's a definite thumbs up, working great for us. Congratulations! You now know how to make a demo board and write software to perform USB communication with the 18F4550. So, what's next? I'm going to move to Detroit uh, very soon, Tuesday of next week actually. Uh, so some of these projects are going to have to be on hold at least for the moment. But at least so far, here's what I have planned. Uh, first I'm going to do my video on how to set up an ESD workstation in your house or apartment. So if you're not familiar with taking ESD precautions uh, already, then I'll definitely give you an introduction to that so you can handle the 18F4550 with uh, knowing that you won't hurt it. Uh, after that, I'm going to do an 18F4550 example uh, using both SPI and I2C communication and also involving an LCD display. And then after that, I'm going to come back to the uh, USB material and I'm going to do a USB uh, motor controller. So rather than simply blinking LEDs to uh, show output, we'll actually have working uh, DC motors and servos and steppers attached to the board. 
Um, also, I'm going to eventually add sufficient comments and neaten up the code for the USB demo board project that we've looked at here. Uh, these two, I'm not really sure what order I'm going to do them in, but at least more or less this is the roadmap I plan on following. So, definitely stay tuned uh, to my website, uh, www.18f4550.com, and my YouTube video channel, 18f4550 videos. Uh, see you next time.